Wow. Thank you so much, uh, technical team, for that uh, uh, amazing present worship session that just uh, reminded us of Kunaka Kongwari. Uh, during the session, I had to Google what hallelujah means because <laughs> it was just uh, something that was just so eye opening, Kwandiri. And I just found out it means that God be praised. Indeed, let God be praised for all the blessings that are in our lives. And I, I just got reminded of all the blessings in my life. I thank God for, for all the things that He has done for me, for my parents, you know. And saints, I hope you had the amazing session that I had. And we just have to praise God who always causes us to have victory through Christ. Uh, I would like to welcome any saints that joined us uh, during the praise and worship session. I also hope that you got something. And to all the mothers who, who joined during the praise and worship session, Happy Mother's Day. We continue to celebrate you today. Uh, talking about mothers, I would like to welcome a powerful minister today who is giving us a, a, our communion and offering message, who is also a mother. And I tell you this, uh, every time you call a name, you cannot not say, am I? <laughs> you just call it by saying, am I? Welcome, mommy. OK, thank you, Leti. Thank you so much. Are you Good ready morning, for us? Yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, you can take it away. Thank you. Thank you, Leti. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, saints. Good morning to you, all saints, wherever you are across the world. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, privileged and honored to be sharing with you the communion message today, and uh, I'll also be sharing on our giving an encouragement message. So without wasting much time, I'll dive straight into our, our, our first scripture, which is coming from uh, jo, uh, uh, the, the, the John chapter. So Leti, can you read for us? Read from John 6, verse 51, then 53 to 56 amplified. Thank you. I myself am this living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever and also the bread that I shall give for the life of this world, of the world is my flesh, body. And Jesus said to them, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, you cannot have any life in you unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, unless you appropriate his life and the saving merit of his blood. He who feeds on my flesh, and drinks my blood, possesses now eternal life, and I will raise him up from the dead on the last day. For my flesh is true and genuine food, and my blood is true and genuine drink. He who, he who feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood dwells continually in me, and I, in like manner, dwell continually in him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Leti. Here we find Jesus telling the people who were following him, and that was including his 12 disciples, that he was telling them that if they had to eat his, bread, his body and drink his blood, that was the only way that they could have life. And I want to believe this same message is for us today, that is only in the eating of his body and the drinking of his blood that we can only appropriate the life of Jesus. And here the background of this story is that um, Jesus had performed a miracle where he, uh, he, he, he multiplied the five loaves and the three fish and he fed 7,000. And in some passage of scripture, a different gospel, he talks about 5,000. And we hear that it's, it was not inclusive of even the women and the children. So we are talking about a lot of people where he multiplied or miraculously multiplied the bread and the fish. So when after this miracle, the people were looking for Jesus and they had to, to get on boards to look for him. So when they found him, they said, oh, okay, this is where you are. 
And now Jesus knowing, because he's God and he's all knowing, he knew that that people that were following him were following him because of the miracle that he'd performed. So now he rebuked them that you are after the miracle that I performed and the bread that I fed you with. But let me tell you now, I am the real bread. I'm the real bread of life. So if you want life, if you want uh, to, 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 to have my life, it's only by you eating of my body and drinking of my, of my, of my blood. And I remember some of the people in, the, in that uh, multitude, they, they, it's like they, they sort of like rebuked Jesus for his words. And some of them, they even departed and turned away from Jesus. And he has been asked his, his disciples if they wanted to continue working with him because he had to tell them that he was the real life. There was no life that they could get anywhere else except you know, that life was in him. So now we are talking to ourselves today that there's no other life that we can have in this world. There's nothing in this world that can give us the life that we should have, except that life comes from Jesus himself. So we, can, we are going to, to, to read from another, um, the next uh, uh, scripture. Uh, Romans 8 verse 10, TPT. Now Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Amen. Amen. And as I was saying before, that there is nothing and there is no way that we can have this life that only Christ can give. So as he was saying, he said, if you eat the, of my, my body and you drink of my blood, you are going to have this life. In other words, he's saying, we are only going to experience or to appropriate this kind of life that he's talking about only if we are going to partake of his body and partake of his blood. So which is what we have already done and which is what we already do as we come together, uh, uh, like on this day, where we are going to be partaking of the communion and I want to believe each one of us, we have our communion elements ready. So what I just want to share, uh, my, 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 my life, what happened to me, to come to a place where I would take communion seriously. I was one person who would go to church, we do communion. And I was one person also who would want to take communion when we go to church. But after my experience, and my understanding of what communion really means to me, I think I've changed the way that in my attitude, I changed my attitude towards the, 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 the communion elements and what communion means to me. Uh, I think when my son was 22, I'm not good with calculations. You can help me there. My son who's 22 now was four years then when I got sick. I got six, I got sick that I even went to the doctors and the doctors could not tell why, what I was sick for. So when they, was, they were doing their checks, they, they, they did what uh, is called the lumbar puncture on me, on my back. But which I realized later on that that lumbar puncture is actually the one that caused me even to be sick, even worse than, than, the, than when, when I was, when I'm telling you that I was sick, I even, it, got, it, it even got worse. So when I got worse, I think I got sick for more than two years. If I say two years, I think it's, that's when I would like feel myself. But when I was sick in that time, I, I even got to a place where I almost died. I cannot give the whole story, but I, I was sick since I was sick. So when this other day I went to church, the, uh, I think I remember the church that I was going to, they saved communion. And it was only on that day when I really understood what I, that communion, I had, to, I had to take communion seriously and what that communion meant to me. So from that day on, on that day from onset, I started doing communion in my own home. 
with my family or sometimes just by myself, because I, I understood that this communion that I'm taking, I have to continually take it as even Jesus said that when you do it, do it more often. And as often as you do it, do it remembering him, remembering him what, what he did, his body and his blood, what he did through his body and his blood and what it means to me. So as I took communion, as I, I took communion, as I said before that, I started taking communion like tablets. You know, sometimes you are given a, a prescription that you can take your prescription maybe three times or four times a day. I started taking communion like medicine because I knew that as I continually take this communion, it is going to give me the life of Christ in my body. So if we can go back to that scripture that I let you have read before in uh, Romans, uh, um, uh, Romans um, 8. Mm. The last uh, um, uh, Romans uh, scripture. Yes, Romans 8, which says, now Christ lives his life in me, in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effect of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully ac accepted by God. So this, this Romans uh, scripture that we've read, it's talking about now what I was doing now. I was doing communion because I knew what the body of Christ meant to me and what his bad body his blood meant to me. So as I continually took communion, since I tell you, I got healed. And I cannot even put a, a point a finger, finger exactly when I got healed. But I want to believe the attitude that I had towards taking communion, it gave me the life of Christ in my body. So now when we are taking, we are taking communion, and we are, we, are, we, are, we are taking communion, his blood and his body, as we do it continually, the life of Christ that is already resident in our spirit man is going to manifest in my, in, my, in my body. Because when I received Jesus, I received his life in my spirit man. My soul and my body did not receive the same, the, the, the same life. So as we do communion, Jesus knew that we had to do it continually. So as we continue to partake of the, the, the elements and as we get the revelation of what these elements mean to, to us, then we are going to, to, to appropriate or we are going to manifest this life of Christ that is already resident in our, in, in our spirit man and is going to manifest in our, in our bodies. So it's not talking, I'm not only talking about um, healing, we are talking about prosperity. We are talking about all that Christ died to give us. He gave us his life, a life that is victorious. Yes, we understand that in this world, the, the, the world is full of sin. But because Jesus took away sin and we accepted his taking away of our sins, we accepted his life. And his life definitely and without doubt is going to manifest in our bodies. So saints, each time that we come together, like today, as we are partaking of our of this, of these elements, and even if we don't wait to come on Sunday to, to on the table on the Lord's table, let's do it diligently in our homes. Because Jesus, if it was not important, he was not going to tell us that we do it as often as possible. So he's, he told us to do it as, as, as much as possible so that his life that he already imparted in us will be able to manifest that life in our physical bodies. So saints, let's partake of the communion knowing what Jesus did for us and keeping it in remembrance. And that remembrance is bringing appropriation and that remembrance is bringing manifestation of Christ's life in our lives. So as we partake of today, of these elements today, let's remember what Christ did for us. He gave us his life, life that causes us to, to be victorious, even in this world. Thank you, saints. Amen. We mm -hmm. can partake.
without wasting time, we can go into our um, giving encouragement message, which uh, we are going to read our first scripture from Genesis. Okay, Genesis chapter four, verses three to five. Um, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Amen. Amen. Here is I'm going to be sharing on our giving message. We want to look at this story, which we've just read about um, Cain and Abel. That was uh, the first uh, offspring from Adam and Eve. And we hear that when time passed, another brother brought his firstlings of his flock. But the other brother, we, can you, if we are going to just reread the passage, it's talking about a, a, that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. We are not hearing much, but we are just hearing that he brought fruit from the ground. And we are, when we are reading about Abel, it says he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. There we, can, we are having an explanation of um, what they brought before the Lord. I can see that from the, 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 from the, 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 first, the first brother, he just picked, what I'm picking from the scripture is just, he just picked from the ground. Mm -hmm. But with that other brother, Abel, he made a choice. He, he, he took time to pick up what he wanted to, to give to the Lord because he knew he was taking his offering to the Lord and he had to make a choice. He, he was deliberate in choosing what he, the, the, his offering. So I think what I've heard with other people, they said um, the reason why, why God accepted Abel's um, offering was because he, had, he was a, 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 he, he, he kept animals. So because he kept animals, it, it was because he was, it was like a type and shadow of Jesus who was going to be offered as a, as a, as a sacrifice. That's, that's the, the school of thought that I, I've had. But we are going to have a, a full answer from the, our next scripture, which comes from Hebrews. We are going to have the reason why God accepted uh, one's offering over uh, the other brothers. Hebrews 11, verse 4, TPT. Faith moved Abel to choose a more acceptable sacrifice to offer God than his brother Cain. And God declared him righteous because of his offering of faith. By his faith, Abel still speaks instruction to us to, even today, even though he is long dead. Amen. Hey. Amen. So we've got, we've got our answer from Hebrews. We hear that God, we cannot please God without faith. Mm -hmm. So now we hear that Abel, when he offered his, his, his offering or his sacrifice, he was moved by faith. And we know that faith is one that God looks for. Whatever that we do, if we, we, we don't do it out of faith, then before God, we know it's, it's not going to please God. So now, what am I saying today, saints? We hear that the, the last uh, um, uh, uh, passage in the scripture is saying, Abel st still speaks instruction to us today, even though he's long, he's, he's long, de he's, he's long dead. What is, what is that instruction that is left for us to learn today? The instruction is that whatever that we do, we should do from a position of faith. We have to give what I, the message that I have today, I'm, I'm encouraging us to give. But when we choose to give to God, let's do it out of faith. Let's not just give because we are giving, but we are giving because we are giving from a position of faith. And one other thing, the lesson also that I got from this other brother, Cain, 
where it says he just picked from the ground and gave to God. Yes, he was giving to God, but he just picked. For my, what I learned from, the lesson that I learned from there is when I want to give God, I have to know that I cannot outgive God. He is the only one who showed us what giving is like. We hear the Bible saying that um, God gave us his one and only, he didn't have two sons, he had only one begotten son. He gave us what he had, he gave of himself. Imagine God giving us his one and only begotten son. So which means he really sat down to think what to give to the world. And now when he asks me to give, honestly, I have to be mindful and I have to be purposeful in the way that I give with the understanding of how much he gave. So if he's, if he's asking me to give, honestly, I, I should also follow his, his footsteps. I should be his daughter in, in whatever that I do. When he asks me to give, then I also have to give from a position of faith, giving all that I have, giving from the heart. So this is the encouragement that I have for us saints, that whatever that we do for God, especially when it comes to giving, can we do it from a position of faith? That's the encouragement that I give. So soon after, we are going to have uh, slides coming up on how to give since we are an online uh, church. So you are going to, to, to get the, 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 the ways that we can give. Amen. I'm going to pray over our um, communion and uh, giving. Holy Father, we thank you for who you are to us. Thank you, Father, for your great love that our minds cannot fathom. Thank you, Father, for your great love that caused you to give us Jesus, to give us your life, to give us all that you have and nothing, we are missing nothing because we have Jesus, even as your word says, if you gave us Jesus, what else can you withhold from us? You have given everything to us that we may need in this life. You have given us life that we may be able to be victorious in every area of our lives, be it sickness, be it poverty, be it lack, be it anything that the devil is, uh, is brought in the world, you have given us your life so that we can live victoriously. And we are forever grateful for this life that you have given us. We are forever grateful, Lord, for you are the only one who showed us what giving is all about. You have loved us and you have gi given to us. You have loved us not because you have loved us, so we also love you back. We don't love you, not just, don't love you 
ordinarily, but we are loving you back because you are the only one who showed us what love is all about. So Father, we are thanking you for everything that we have because we know that whatever that we have, it is also from you. So you are asking us to give you what you have already given us. So in faith, Father, we are giving you back what you have already given us. And we thank you, Father, that you cannot, we cannot outgive you. So we thank you, Father, even for, 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 for blessing us. And as we give to you, Father, we are also appropriating faith. We are giving because we are the only one who first gave us. So we thank you for Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Maima and Yannike, for that powerful message. Uh, indeed, uh, it is faith that pleases God. And when we give, we should give God our best. I'm just going to read a couple of messages from our chat. Uh, Mrs. Mack is saying, amen to manifesting Christ in all aspects of our lives, spirit, soul, and body. Amen to allowing Christ to live his life big in and through us. And she's also saying the attitude behind my giving matters to God. Our motive matters to him. God loves a cheerful, prompt giver who gives from a good heart and by faith. And Brother Moses Shenjai saying, Amen, we give it. We give from faith. Thank you so much, saints. Um, we are now getting into our, uh, the main message. Our main message is being delivered from, uh, from Mr. Meg, a powerful preacher, and he is just going to teach us today of, on overcoming temptation using the word. So, Mr. Meg, are you ready for us? Hi, lady. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm as ready as the Holy Spirit has prepared way, passage, and direction uh, for, 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 for the word to be uh, transmitted. Uh, thank you so much. You can take it away. Thank you very much. Um, good day, saints, and welcome back to our second and last session on, on, uh, uh, on this topic, overcoming temptation. Uh, saints, let's, 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 let's remember, keep in mind, the key, the key word in this top, on this topic or in this topic is overcoming. That's the key word, is overcoming temptation. And like we, 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 we spoke about it last week, like I, I expressed last week, temptation will come to everybody. Temptation will, 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 will attack everyone. But what matters is, that we have to overcome it and we overcome it using scripture, using the word. So if anyone is not facing temptation or it has not faced temptation, maybe the, the, the issue is that person is traveling in the same direction with the devil. Because if you're not, if you are walking according to the word, according to Jesus Christ, to the word and uh, according to, to scripture, then temptation will come to everyone. Uh, let's move on to our second, uh, 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 yes. The structure of, our of my message is, what is temptation? Key scriptures about temptation, three sources of temptation. Now, last week we, we covered the first three, temptation, key scriptures, and uh, the three sources of temptation. And then we also covered examples of temptation, but today we're going to start uh, as, 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 as we go forward on the, on the, with the temptation, uh, finalizing the temptation that was faced by Joseph, and then the temptation uh, that was faced by Peter, and finally, ultimate one is the temptation of Jesus. But before we get there, let's just a, a do a recap. The recap first is, what is temptation? And I'll go quickly through this because we did it last week. I'll just read through it to remind us the definitions of temptation that, that I presented last week. Temptation is a trial in which a man has a free choice of being faithful or unfaithful to God. Remember, it's a free choice. Temptation is a challenge to choose between fidelity and infidelity to one's obligations toward God. Remember again, it's a choice, one chooses. Temptation is an incitement or solicitation 
to a bad or an evil act, enticement to something wrong by presenting arguments that are deceiving, that seem plausible or convincing, or by the offer of some pleasure or apparent advantage as the inducement. So here we see that it is externally induced. Then, like I said, it's all around us. Even Jesus Christ was tempted, but he was tempted in the desert for good reason, to show us the example that we'll see later on. So expect it, uh, 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 saints. It's a battle that we, one will face and that one might, must face. And you, it, all, it always comes through a door that has been left open. And the, the quotation that I used last week is, temptation is a devil looking through the keyhole. Yield, yielding to temptation is, is, is like opening the door and inviting him in. So remember, again, it's a choice to open the door to an evil thing that is peeping through the keyhole. He can't even see everything inside. So that's why he peeps. But when he peeps, it's a choice to open, yield to it. And it's also our choice to overcome it by using scripture and using the word. Now, I've, uh, as a recap, I've, I've limited the number of scriptures that we, 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 we looked uh, uh, through uh, last week, and I'm just going to go through these quickly. I'm going to read them and then uh, quickly. You know, the, 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 the key here is it, uh, Hebrews 4, 14 to 15 says, Inasmuch then as we believers have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, the high priest is Jesus, the son of God. Let us now hold fast our confession of faith and cling tenaciously to our absolute trust in him as savior. Now, for we do not have a high priest who is Jesus Christ, who is unable to sympathize and understand our weaknesses and temptations. But what, what do we have? We have a high priest who is Jesus Christ, one who has been tempted knowing exactly how it feels to be human in every aspect as we are yet without committing sin. So we, we found out even from last week that temptation comes, but temptation in itself is not a sin. But when one yields to temptation, then one falls into sin. And when one falls into sin, you are separated from God. And then there are consequences, there's ch challenges, there's death. But that, the reason why Jesus Christ came and was tempted was to show us how to, how to overcome it so that he knows how it feels as a human. He understands, in the TPT says, he understands humanity. For as a man, because he came down, God came down as man. Our magnif magnificent king priest, was Jesus Christ, was tempted in every way, just as we are, and he conquered sin. He overcame it. So that's why we will finally go through his example. And that's why his example is the only one that works. He rebuked, he overcame temptation by using the word, by using scripture. And the, 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 the other scripture that, that is uh, important for us just to remember as we go forward is that no temptation is overtaken or enticed you. That is not common or that is not common to human experience. So you see, temptations in anybody's life are no different from what others have experienced. So that's why we're going through examples of scripture in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, to show, to show us that every temptation that we will face, we are going to face, or we have faced, somebody else has faced a similar temptation. It might be the medium or mode of that temptation to come could be different. Now it could be coming through social media. It could be coming through a, 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 a movie. It could be coming through a novel or the natural way through association. But it doesn't matter. It's the same temptation that was faced. But you know what? Our God is faithful and he will not let you or me to be tempted beyond our ability to resist and to overcome. But along with temptation he is in the past according to the examples we will see and we've seen and now which is today and forward he will always provide the way out so that you will be able to enjoy it without yielding that's the key without yielding so how do we resist it how do we rebuke it how do we overcome it by the word by scripture so everything that we experience uh, coming as temptation, somebody else has felt it before. 
and their ways of coming out. Others fell. But in all circumstances, in all uh, those scenarios, there were circumstances, yes. But those that fell, fell into death. But those that recovered, recovered into life. Amen. Let's move on. Now, as we recap again, we had three sources of temptation, the world, the flesh, and the, the devil. But you know, the chief, the orchestrator of temptation is the devil. Even through the world is the, de the devil. He is the one who's controlling the world. Through the flesh is the devil. He's the one who's, who's, who's controlling the flesh. But we rebuke, we refuse, we overcome through the word, through scripture. Let's move on. And and we, we this 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 is um, the the, uh, the examples that we went through. We went through Adam and Eve, Abraham, um, 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 uh, Joseph, and then today the new one we are going to take up is David. David is an interesting one, but we'll see as we we go into in, into scripture. A man after God's own heart, but he did, yeah, things that you can only, only say yeah. Yeah. And then the Simon Peter, who was Jesus Christ's chief disciples, he was also tempted. But then the Lord allowed himself to be tempted to show us how to overcome it. Okay, let's move on. So now, um, just to, to recap finally on the, the final uh, example that we looked at uh, last week, the, there's this verse, I had not put it up last week, Genesis, uh, let you can read it for us. Genesis 39, verse 11. One day he went into the house to attend his duties and none of the household servants was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Amen. Amen. You know, from previous scripture that we read last week or you can read today or you can read tomorrow, he said Joseph was a handsome guy. But then at this point in time, he had already been given authority over Potiphar's uh, house. He was like in charge now. But Potiphar, Potiphar's wife lusted on Joseph. Potiphar's wife wanted to commit adultery with Joseph. You see, Joseph had the opportunity. Joseph had the humble time. Joseph had... You know, I mean, I mean, he could have fallen into that temptation, but scripture tells us what he did. He left his cloak in her hand and ran. Remember, we mentioned, and I, 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 I emphasized last week, there are temptations you run from. You run for your life. And adultery is one of them because it's a, it's, it's, it's a temptation that, 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 that affects the body, the body which is, happens to be the Lord's temple. It's, 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 it's a temptation that if one falls into it, it defiles one's body and, 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 and hands. This is one way they specific, the word specifically says run. So how do you be overcome temptation on adultery. The word says, do not commit adultery. Then the word says, run. So saints, when you meet such a temptation, run for life, run for your life. That's what the word says. That's how to overcome it. You avoid it, you overcome it. That's what Joseph did. That's the example he did. So Joseph used the scripture he knew. Uh, next slide. Yeah, Joseph was, was tempted to commit adultery, but he, he did not yield. He stood by the word that he knew. You remember by that, by, by, by that time, they had the Ten Commandments, they had scripture, they, they spoke to God, God spoke to, to them through the angels, and Joseph stood by the scripture that he knew. He ran for life. He took responsibility over his behavior. He knew that adultery was a sin and its consequences. So he stood by his relationship with God. And he avoided sticking or staying in a compromising situation. Because compromising situations can overcome anyone and anybody. We will see as we look into David that it does not matter. David was a man after God's own heart. But we will see. 
Joseph was also loved by God. He ran. He, you know what? Saints, don't sit and pray. Joseph did not sit by the bedside and pray and say, God, help me and, and so that I don't fall into temptation because Potiphar's wife is now pulling me here. He ran. You don't sit and pray, saints. You run. So Joseph used the word he knew, his faith, and he was a prayerful person. Next slide. Now we go to the interesting, the interesting one is this one is, is quite, uh, you will see how, it, why I say it's interesting because the word describes who David was, what David believed in and how David was a man after God's own heart. Letty, you can read 1 Samuel 13, 14, New King James Version. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be the commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. However, years later, the same man, the man after his own heart, had an affair with someone's wife, Uriah, made her pregnant, and maliciously plotted to kill her husband so that he. David could take this woman as his own wife. Amen. You see, this, this word was being said say to Saul. So Saul was a king. Saul did not uh, follow God's commandments. He fell from, uh, um, by the way, uh, he, he did not listen to God's word. So now David was anointed king. But the word tells us that David was a man after God's own heart. So he was, this, is, this is a guy who was strong in faith. This is a guy who really wanted to please God, to follow God. But you know, we will see later how he plotted, uh, how he fell, committed adultery, plotted and got um, um, Uriah killed. Uh, let's move to the next um, uh, slide. Yes, uh, Leti, you can, you can read 2 Samuel 11, verse one to five, which shows which shows us what happened and how David succumbed or how um, David fell to the temptation that he allowed or he opened the door to. 2 Samuel 11 verses 1 to 5. It happened in the spring of the year at a time when kings go to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and, the, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabba. Rabba. But David remained at Jerusalem, and it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a, a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Elimin, Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house, and the woman conceived. So she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Amen. Amen. Now, you see, the, there are so many ways that one opens the door to the devil. And there are so many ways that one falls or overcomes. In this case, the word here is telling us that it was at the time when kings go out to battle. Remember, David had been appointed an anointed king. He was already king of Israel. What was he doing at home? You can see already disobedience. That's how one allows temptation to come in. If David had been obedient according to uh, the, 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 the expectations of his position, he should, have been, he should have been out there in front in battle with Uriah and Joab. Because this is the time when kings go out to battle. He was a king. 
What was he doing on the rooftop while others were fighting? Okay, and now because he's, he goes to the rooftop, he's he's opening the, the door to the devil. So we must never be in the pla in places where we shouldn't be. We must be very conscious of where we go. Who are we? Who we are with? And what we are doing with who, who, whoever we meet there. If we are in the wrong place, temptation will come and easily uh, 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 eclipse you. David was at the wrong at the wrong place. He went to the roof. He saw a woman bathing. The woman was be, was very beautiful to behold. Now you see, there are two things that there are a number of things that happen. You cannot stop your eyes seeing if you gaze around. You will see things. But what it means is, do you, once you see, do you look? There's a difference in seeing and looking. Looking is then you are analyzing. You're getting interested. So David looked. For him to be able to see that the woman was beautiful, he looked. So that was the beginning of his temptation. That was the beginning of David's problem. He looked. He looked to analyze. So that's where the last, that's where the sin actually started. He, but at that point, he was already sinful because he was now lasting somebody's wife. He, he got ensnared. He fell to the desires of his flesh, lust, which led to adultery. It was because of envy. He envied somebody's wife. He was selfish. He had not one wife. He had wives. But he went for somebody. David broke nine of the Ten Commandments, said. He fell to temptation because he allowed himself. He should have run. The example we saw from there, a, 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 a temptation like this, you run for your life. He coveted his neighbor's wife. He lied. He's, he, then he, he, he stole her from the, the, from the husband. He committed adultery. Then he murdered his, he murdered, hey, hey, husband. Uh, let's move on to the uh, next. But there are consequences. There are always consequences when one falls to temptation. See, let you, you can read 2 Samuel 12, 7 to 14. 2 Samuel 12, 7 to 14, Amplified. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel. I anointed you as king over Israel. I spared you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and put your master's wives into your care under your protection. And I gave you the house, royal dynasty of Israel and of Judah. And if, if had that been too little, I would have given you much more. Why have you despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight? You have struck down Uriah the Hittite with a sword and have taken his wife to be your wife. You have killed him, him with the sword of your Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, behold, I will stir up evil against you from your own household, and I will take wives before your eyes and give them to your companion, and you will lie with your wives in broad daylight. Indeed, you did it secretly, but I will do these things before all Israel and in broad daylight. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord also has allowed your sin to pass without further punishment. You shall not die. Nevertheless, because by this deed, you have given a great opportunity to your enemies of the Lord to blaspheme him. The son that is born to you shall certainly die. Amen. Amen. So, uh, saints, uh, what we have to remember is uh, when one falls to temptations, there are consequences. When one falls to temptation, it is, it, you, 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 what it means is you've turned, you've committed a sin. 
And when, when, when one sins, there are consequences. But of course, our God is a good God. Our God is a merciful God. His mercies endure forever. You see, here, the, Nathan the prophet is, is telling David that you are the one. David had said, whoever has done this should be killed. And, and, and which meant David was supposed to be killed. And Nathan is reminding him of that. And he's saying, you have despised the word of the Lord by doing evil in his sight. And he's explaining what he did. Now, you see, some of the consequences that we have to look at here now, and they are in scripture. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you have despised me and have taken Uriah, uh, the, the Hittite, to be, uh, you, you've taken the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your wife. Behold, I'll stir up evil against you from your own house, from his family, and I, I'll take your wives. This is gross uh, 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 sayings. I will take your wives. I, like I said, he had more than one wife, yet he still went for Uriah's wife. But now the, 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 the consequence of that sin, and that he did it on himself. He is the one who provoked the consequences, the consequences to come upon him. Your wives, I, 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 your wives, they will be taken by your comp companion before your eyes and your companion will lie with your wives in broad daylight. How embarrassing. That's part of the consequences that he faced because he allowed himself to fall into temptation. He should have fled. He should have run away. But you see, David, because he was a man after God's own heart, he actually confessed to, 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 to Nathan and said, I've sinned against the Lord. So he he was he's, he 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 was he repented. Uh, let's move on to the to the next uh, um, um, uh, slide. Yes, you see, David recovered from this temptation at this point because because of his faith, because he was a man after God's own heart. He confessed. He submitted himself to correction by Nathan the prophet. He was open and he was open to be accountable to the prophet. So I, I just want us to remember as we look at temptation and how to overcome temptation, we're using word, we're using scripture, yes, but when the consequences, some of them will come before, before on whoever uh, succumbs or falls to the temptation, but because of the message and the love of our Lord, if you repent, if one repents, you will be forgiven. You will be welcome. You're welcome back in. So we must know that falling into temptation and committing a sin is not death to the end because we are told by scripture that your sins, once we turn in by his grace, we are saved. If we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the son of, the, of, of God, and you will believe that he died for us and rose from the dead, for our salvation, to make us righteous and holy. The Lord, Father, our God says, our, your sins I'll remember no more. So there is redemption, there is salvation. But why go through these consequences, uh, uh, saints? Let's avoid falling into temptation. Let's avoid uh, um, um, falling into sin and let's overcome we must overcome temptation. We must overcome uh, these challenges by using scripture, faith, and prayer. Then we recover, we repent, and we are accepted back into the fold because the Lord said, I will never leave you, I'll never forsake you as long as we are saved. And we are saved by grace and not by our own works. So I'm, I'm mixing this up so that we understand that it's better not to fall into temptation. Although you're going to be saved, there are consequences. It's better not to fall into temptation, to avoid consequences, but to live a life that is a good truth and eternal life. Amen. Let's move to the next one. Yeah. Uh, you can, you can, yeah, now, now you see, um, while, while David was a man after God's own heart, and he would repent, but David had a problem. It was lust, it was adultery, it was envy, it was selfishness at times, and arrogance and pride. And the, the feel of power 
as king. Sometimes that bloated him and allowed temptation to come in. So let's see another temptation that the, the devil actually imposed on him because he knew his weakness. Uh, 1 Chronicles 21, verse 1 to 8, lady. 1 Chronicles 21, 1 to 8. Satan, the adversary, stood up against Israel and incited David to count the population of Israel. So David said to Joab, and the leaders of the people. Go and count Israel from Beersheba to Dan and bring me their total so that I may know it. Joab said, my Lord, may the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as they are. But my Lord, the King, are you not all my, I, sorry, but my Lord, the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why does my Lord require this? Why will he bring good on Israel? But the king's word prevailed over Joab. So Joab left and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the total of the census of the people to David. And all Israel were 1.1 million men who drew the sword and in Judah, 470,000 men who drew the sword, but he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them because the king's order was detest detestable to Joab. Now God was displeased with this act of arrogance and pride and he struck Israel. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech you to take away the wickedness and guilt of your servant, for I have acted foolishly. Amen. Amen. Now you see, David once again, a man after God's own heart, a man who has been anointed and chosen by God to be king, he falls again to temptation. You know, Satan, the adversary, Satan, he knew. Uh, 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 D D David's weaknesses. So he came again and incited him to count uh, the population of Israel. And God said, this displeases me because this is an act of arrogance and pride. Remember I said, David had problems with his adultery. He was selfish, arrogant, arrogant. He was full of pride. He, 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 that's how he valued himself. Yeah, he, 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 you see, David, he was often, oftenly succumbing to temptation. So, uh, saints, we need to stick and stay in the word. We need to stay very intimately with the Lord, with our Jesus Christ. We need to know scriptures so that we are not like David, who often succumbed and fell who was often tempted and fell. And that caused a lot of grief for him and his family. And, but then look, he would, over, he would come back, he would repent. I've sinned greatly because I've done this. I beseech you, please take this away. Uh, let's move to the ne next, 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 next. Uh, ask. Yeah, you see now, like I, I said before, like the word says, God is not the author of sin. You see, David was tempted by Satan. The devil is the one that besieged him. God tempts no man to sin. You know, a census in itself was not a sin. Because one would ask, what was wrong with this? But the word or scripture that David should have remembered in Exodus 30, 12 to 16, had given the Israelites the instructions to follow in a census, which David did not. So David was disobedient. He was tempted. He fell. He was disobedient because he thought of himself higher than what he was. So saints, if we remember the word, if we remember scripture, then we can overcome temptation. But you cannot or I cannot remember scripture that I have not read. I cannot remember scripture that I do not know. So for me to be able to remember scripture and use scripture to use it to overcome, 
temptation. I have to stay in the word. Saints, you have to stay in the word. Saints, you have to read the word. Saints, you have to meditate on the word. Saints, you have to share, you have to fellowship to know the word, to understand the word. Hence, then with that knowledge the, and the wisdom that only comes through the Holy Spirit and the word, we use scripture, we use the word to overcome temptation. David, yes, like I said, he repented. We've got a good God, a merciful God. He mercy, his mercy is endure forever. He was forgiven by God because our God is a loving God. And the, the, the word says, nothing can come between us and God's love. But if we fall to temptation, there are consequences. And we don't want those consequences. God will always forgive us. He has forgiven our sins when we repent. But we don't want the, to inflict on ourselves the consequences that go with that sin. The consequences that go with that fall. So, you must, we must, saints, we must always remember that falling to temptation has its negative consequences. And when, 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 when we look at David's life, there was strife. There were so many wars that he had to fight. And then he had his sons fighting each other and killing each other. And one of his sons, Absalom, had committed incest with um, uh, his half-sister, Tamar. And then, um, uh, sorry, uh, his, his, his son, um, um, uh, Amnon. Amnon, sorry, his son Amnon committed incest. And Absalom, Absalom, the other son, this, the brother to Tamar, killed Amnon. And then Absalom, after that, rebelled against David. And there was wars again between the two of them, but then Absalom ended up dying. So David was in mourning now and again because he was he is a guy who was succumbing to temptation more, so, more, more often than not. So saints, for us not to fall into temptation every now and again, let's keep the word. Let's stay in the word. Let's read the word. Let's share the word. And then we will remember the word. One thing for sure, saints, you can't remember what you don't know. So we have to receive the word. We have to read the word for ourselves. And we have to explain or meditate on the word and share with others fellowship and then understand the word. We have to listen to the Holy Spirit as we read the word, as he interprets and as we get a revelation. But we have to be there continuously. You can only remember that which you know and that which is in your, in your mind. So saints, we fight temptation through the word, but for that to happen, we have to stay in the word. Uh, next. Next now, we go to um, Simon Peter. Simon Peter, uh, we can say he was one of the chief uh, disciples. And, and even in that closer inner circle, there was, Peter, James, and John. And Simon Peter is the one who was be even instructed by, by the Lord to look after the flock. But anyway, uh, let, you can read Luke 22, verse 31 to 34. Luke 22, verses 31 to 34, Amplified. Simon, Simon Peter, listen. Satan has demanded permission to sift all of you like grain. But I have prayed, especially for you, Peter, that your faith and confidence in me may not fail, and that you, once you have turned back again to me, strengthen and support your brothers in the faith. And Peter said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you both to prison and to death. And Jesus said, I say to you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you utterly deny three times that you know me. Amen. Amen. You see, in, 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 in Luke 22, 31 to 34, Satan demanded permission to sift. So you saying, like I said, there is no one who's absolved or nobody who, who is exempt from temptation. Simon Peter came for the chief disciple. 
sorry, Satan, the devil, came for Simon Peter, the chief disciple, to tempt him. And he wanted to shake him, to shake his faith, so that he rebukes or he, he, he falls away from, from and, and, and gets separated from, from the Lord. And once that happens, you have committed that sin, you are under attack, you are open to death. Because that, that is the only thing that the devil gives, death. It's Jesus who came to give life. He's Jesus who is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And certain, certain or the devil is like a ro ro roaring, ro roaring lion who is seeking anybody who opens the door so that he attacks him. The only way to resist him and the only way to overcome him is when one knows scripture and when one knows that the devil is a liar, he's the chief tempter, he's the chief deceiver. It's in the scriptures. When you know that, then you know you overcome him because you resist him, you rebuke him, or you, 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 you flee. Let's, let's move to the next one. Now, we, we're going to see how uh, uh, we, we, what, what, what Jesus did, and then we will finally look at how uh, um, Simon Peter himself was tempted. Jesus said, before the cock crows three times, Simon Peter, you're going to deny me. Uh, sorry, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. And now, let's uh, read for us, let's uh, look 22 verse 40. Luke 22 verse 40. When he arrived at the place called Gethsemane, he said to them, pray continually that you may not fall into temptation. Amen. Yes. Now, you see, Christ prayed for Peter. But Peter needed to pray himself as well so that he is not tempted and he doesn't fall in the temptation. But you see what happened is, Jesus said, pray continually that you may not fall into temptation. But what we remember from scripture is as Jesus was going to pray, Simon Peter and the others were going to always sleeping. Mm -hmm. They were not paying attention. They were not focusing. They did not pray. Just like I said, when temptation comes, saints, you just don't pray and sit. But at least pray. Simon Peter didn't. He opened the door. Simon Peter, at this point, he didn't pray for himself to exercise his faith. So he opened the door to temptation to the devil. And how did the temptation come? When he, he got into the courtyard, then they were saying, but are you not one with Jesus? Were you not the same with Jesus? Are you not from uh, Nazareth with Jesus? And lady, you can read for us what Simon Peter said. Luke 22, 60 to 62. But Peter said, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Immediately, whilst he was speaking, a rooster crowed, and the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had told him before the rooster crows today, you would deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly, deeply grieved, and distressed. Amen. So you see, Peter, this was the final time, that the, the third time that Peter was again denying Jesus Christ. So what it meant was the devil wanted Peter to deny Jesus Christ. You deny your faith. You deny life. That's what the devil wanted Peter to do. But fortunately for Peter, of course, Christ had prayed for him. He was also strong in his faith. Peter then remembered. But saints, what did Peter remember? Peter remembered the word of the Lord. So how did Peter then overcome this? By remembering the word. So yes, that's what we're talking about. One can only overcome a temptation by using the word, by using scripture. But for you, to, for one, for me, for anyone to use the word or to scripture, you have to remember the word of the Lord. That is very clear, saints. Let's 
keeping the word so that we can remember it. And after that, you can feel that he was, he was in pain. He was remorseful. He went out and wept bitterly. He was grieved, deeply grieved and distressed. That was his repentance. But it was only because he had remembered the word. Mm -hmm. Next slide. You see, Satan wanted to shake Peter so much that he will shake him and shake his faith so forcefully so that Peter would fail. But Jesus had prayed for Peter. Unfortunately, Peter did not pray for himself when Jesus said, please stay behind and fail. So that's why he fell at this point in time and he, 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 he almost succumbed to, 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 to the temptation. But because he remembered the word, that is what saved him. That is what brought him back. He remembered the word, which to us now, that's scripture. That's the word of Jesus Christ. And because of his, 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 his faith and the prayer that Jesus had, 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 had made for him, he recovered. Amen. Let's move to the next one. Now, Simon Peter also had a challenge. While Simon Peter, like in this case, um, um, uh, 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 was tempted and, and failed, Simon Peter had a fear of men. Simon Peter was, he wanted to conform to his neighbors, his surroundings, or his, his, his community. The word in Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to the ways of the world, but be continually re renewed in your mind. And by being renewed, you are, I'm aligning, or one is aligning to the word of God. And you, you can only align to the word of God when you read it. You can only align to the word of, of God when, 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 when you listen to it. You can only align to the word of God when you understand it, when you meditate on it. But Simon Peter had this challenge. But let's see, what challenge did he have? This challenge of conformity. The challenge maybe of peer pressure. But I'll let, uh, read for us Galatians 2, 11 to 14. Galatians 2, verses 11 to 14, Amplified. Now when Cephas Peter came to Antioch, I opposed him face to face about his conduct there, because he stood condemned by his own actions. Before certain men came from James, he used to eat his meals with Gentiles. But when the men from Jerusalem arrived, he began to withdraw and separate himself from the Gentile believers because he was afraid of, of those from the uh, circumcision. The rest of the Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, ignoring their knowledge that Jewish and Gentile Christians were united under the new covenant into one faith. But with the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy, but when I saw that they were not being straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I told Cephas Peter in front of everyone, if you being a Jew, live as you have been living like a Gentile, not like a Jew. How is it that you are now virtually forcing the Gentiles to live like Jews if they want to eat with you? Amen. Yes. So, yes, since you see here, like, like, like I, I said before, Simon Peter had a problem. He fell to temptation of conformity, to align himself to the world or to peer pressure. He fell to the challenge. Uh, uh, instead of keeping to the word, to the gospel, he then would align with the fellow Jews, which is what happened. Uh, let's, let's, let's move to the, to the next. Um, but, but you see, just like David recovered by by um, submitting himself to Nathan. In this case, Apostle Paul is the one that took it upon himself, which is what we need to do, saints, one to each other. Apostle Paul actually approached Peter, rebuked him, and told him off, and said, why are you forsaking the gospel? Why are you following the, 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 the culture of the Jews 
which is not according to the word of Jesus Christ. Why are you forcing the Gentiles to be circumcised when you know that people are only saved by grace through faith? So in this case, Simon Peter had fallen to this temptation of conformity peer pressure. He feared criticism from his Jews, Jew, Jew, Jewish uh, compatriots or fellow Jewish brothers, and he wanted to please men, not God. So saints, we must be very alert in what we're doing. Are we trying to please people around us? Are we trying to be conforming to the crowd that is around us? Are, 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 we, are we trying to align to, to, to be seen as nice people? by conforming, by aligning to worldly uh, desires, to worldly norms, to worldly principles, instead of choosing life, which is according to God or godly behavior. We must be very careful. We must be very discernful. But for, for us to be, to be there, we have to know the word. Simon Peter here was being a hypocrite. And look, it even led others astray. If I become a hypocrite, I'll lead everybody who believes in me astray. Simon Peter, he led people like Barnabas. Is, is there in the scripture? They were led astray by his hypocrisy because he was not following the word according to the gospel. This was actually sinful acts. But unfortunately, Christ himself had entrusted Peter to take care of the flock. But the good thing is, there was another apostle, Apostle Paul, who rebuked him, corrected him. So all I'm saying, saints, is when we are walking together and you see a fellow Christian falling into temptation, please be ready, be eager, and be quick to help. Be eager, be quick to rebuke, godly rebuke, so that you, we correct each other so that one does not fall into temptation. And when you do that, when one does that, let's use scripture, let's use the word. That's how one overcomes. You, what is, sometimes, sometimes it doesn't happen that you just do, you don't do it alone. You do it with a, within a community. You do it within a church. You do it within a, 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 a fellowship. And those who, when they see others being tempted, who believe in the word, who are strong in the word. Let's help each other. Let's build each other up and let's remind each other of the word. Let's remind each other of what scripture says so that our fellow believer does not fall. Remember this was one, the chief disciple who was already falling here and, 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 and being a hypocrite. Uh, let you can read also two, you, what, what happened then. Two, two Peter uh, three, and this is, this is Peter now. Read, writing this book, 2 Peter 3, 15 to 16. And consider the patience of our Lord, his delay in judging and avenging wrong is salvation. That is allowing time for more to be saved. Just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him by God, speaking about these things as he does in all of his letters, in which there are some things that are difficult to understand, which the untaught and the unstable have fallen into error, twist and misinterpret, just as they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. Amen. Amen. You know, Peter was, was being a smart aleck here. Because uh, Apostle Paul was writing what he had done to, and said to Peter in these letters. I'm sure Peter read the letters. So Peter knew. He, of course, he repented, although he didn't say it directly. He's saying, let's, 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 let's consider the patience of our Lord, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you in according to the wisdom given to him by God. He was admitting that the correction that he got from Apostle Paul was correct, but he didn't admit directly. That's neither here nor there. But the point is, he remembered. He knew what the gospel meant. He knew what the gospel said. He knew what salvation does. He knew how salvation came by grace through faith, by believing in Jesus Christ. 
and he knew that it was not because of circumcision. And so he knew that he'd erred. Now he's admitting here. Yeah. He's admitting, he's conceding to the word. So saying, we can only overcome temptation for anything, through anything, through any means, by the word. And we have to concede and follow and allow us to be led by the word. This is what Peter did. So because of that, Peter repented, came round and wrote books where, like, like in, this, in this case, scriptures which help us to understand, which help us to walk according to the word, which help us to be more intimate with the Lord, which help us to grow in faith, which help us to receive our blessings and the promises that God has for us. So saints, we have to acknowledge scripture as taught. We have to acknowledge scripture is read. We have to acknowledge the word and use the word to fight temptation and to overcome temptation. Next. Yes, we can move to the next one. Yes, now this is the ultimate. This is the final one. This is the one that talks, that shows, that directs how Jesus Christ resisted and overcame temptation. Lady, you can read for us Matthew 4, verse 1 to 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen. Yes, now, you see now, I, I, I can't add much more to what Jesus is doing and saying here. But firstly, we have to remember, Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterward, he was hungry. I, I, I cannot add much to that, the meaning of that. You would know if anybody has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, you are definitely hungry. He needed food because he had a body, a body like ours, which requires food for replenishment, which required food for sustenance. He was hungry. And so the tempter, the deceiver, he always comes where there is a perceived need. He always comes where there is a perceived lack. He always comes where there is an opportunity to exploit a situation which, which we, in, in a manner where somebody thinks, I am getting a resolution. I am getting correction. I am getting an upliftment. He, he takes, he takes that, that chance with us, that opportunity to deceive us wherever he realizes, oh, this person desires this, does not have this. So if I tempt him with the provision of this that he desires or she desires and is not getting, by any means, by hook and by crook, then they will concede to temptation and they fall. Basically, what he wants us, us to do, what, what he wants to happen to us is fall and commit sin. But in, in, in our limited minds, if we don't use the word, if we don't remember the word, if we don't keep the word, because it's the word that gives us values, it's the word that gives us principles, it's the word that gives us direction, it's the, the word that directs us in the ways of the Lord, which are good, which are just and which prospers. He wants us to move away from there, but he tries to sneak through by something that we lack or desire. That's what he was trying to do with Jesus. But Jesus wants to show you that it doesn't matter whether you've had 40 days and 40 nights fasting and you're hungry and you need to eat. And somebody says, this is an easy way to get a meal. It is written. It is written, saints. That's the word. That's the gospel of truth. 
That's the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is written. And when it is written, he quotes the scripture. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by what? By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is through the word. So not only are we overcoming temptation by and through the word, we are gaining life. We are gaining, we're getting our desires fulfilled by aligning to the word, by keeping to the word, by remembering the word, by saying the word. I think it's Matthew 6, 33, which says, seek you first the kingdom of God and everything that you need will be added to you, will be given to you. We seek the kingdom of the law of, 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 the, of, the, of, of God through the word, through understanding the word, through hearing the word, through keeping the word, through aligning to the word. We get intimate to the Lord and all our desires are fulfilled, not through this deceiver, not through temptation. Next. Matthew 4, verses 5 to 7. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him up on a pin pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he gives his angels charge over you and your hands shall bear you up and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. A stone. Then Jesus said to him, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Amen. Yeah, you see, the devil, the deceiver, he's currently the, 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 the ruler of the world. That's why the world is so corrupted. So he is tempting Jesus with power, with authority over, 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 over this world, over this earth. But okay, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. He rebukes him. He is show, Jesus here is just showing us how to, 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 to overcome temptation, how to rebuke, how to, to, to chase the devil or resist him. He says, it is written. Saints, it is what is written? The word of God. It is the word. It is scripture. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. He uses scripture. It is written. So, saints, we've got so many temptations in this world. We want to be recognized. We want to be esteemed. We want to be respected. We want to, to prosper. We want to be revered. We want to be honored or whatever. I want to sit in front where a, there's a function. I, I want to be served first. I want this I want this kind of clothing to look like so and so or to look better than ever. The, these desires of the world, power, authority, and everything. Temptation comes through that way. Jesus is showing us that it doesn't matter. It is written. If we keep the word, if we seek the kingdom of the Lord, if we abide by the word, everything, all our, desire, all our desires are fulfilled. So let's not be tempted by the desires of the world of power, authority, and control. It is written. Do not tempt the Lord your God. Let's just follow the word. Let's just align with the Lord. Let's just be close and intimate to the Lord. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to work on us. It is written. We use scripture. We overcome temptation. Next. Matthew 4, verses 8 to 11. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I'll give to you if you fall down and worship me. And Jesus said to him, away with you, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you save. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Amen. Amen. So you see, they, they, yeah, uh, we we just shown uh, in the scripture three temptations that befell uh, Christ, and Christ was answering just by uh, rebuking it or by uh, deflecting it with scripture. Scripture. But you see, the ultimate is the devil when he tempts us, he wants us to worship him. He wants us to fall down on his feet and worship him. All these things I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. Worship the devil, the liar, the deceiver. 
the father of death, the father of lies. Saints, that's the ultimate. We might not realize it. He will come for all different temptations through all different uh, ways and 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 and, and, and path, pathways. He, he, he will try so many different temptations, but ultimately the devil wants us to worship him. He wants us to worship death. Saints, we should not fall to, to temptation. We can overcome to temptation. We will overcome temptation and we will do that according to the way Jesus did. When it came to that point where this, the devil was asking for being worshipped, Jesus did not just say it is written. He said, get off. Away with you, Satan. That's why we rebuke him and we chase him away. And then when we rebuke and chase, because that's the ultimate, we, we worship one only, our Lord Jesus Christ. We, lo we worship the Father, the Creator, the Redeemer, the one who looks af after us the one who provides for us, the one who loved us so much that he gave his only one and only son, Jesus Christ, to save us, to bring us into the kingdom of glory, where everything that we need is fulfilled. So, saints, we should never fall into temptation because the ultimate is to deceive us, to, uh, to get us to fall, to sin, to rebuke the Lord, and to live, the, and to to die. So saints, we seek life, we need life. We go with Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. And every other need that we've got is provided for. And at this point, we say away, get off. Amen. We rebuke using scripture. Next. Look no, for the Satan. Yes. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Amen. 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 You see now, the deceiver, now he's been rebuked, he's been kicked away. But has he given up? No. Says, that's why I'm saying temptation will come to everybody. Be ready. Sat Saturn, the devil is defeated, but he keeps on trying. He keeps on trying. He keeps on trying. He's an enemy. Who is at war with our father? He is actually not at war with us directly, but he is because we are God's children. He is always seeking an opportunity to deceive and tempt us, to take us from our relationship with our father, God Almighty, because he is at war with our father, but he cannot hurt God. So he wants to, to attack God or fight God through us. We are God's children, and he can only do that through deception, through lies, through temptation. It's, we, we, we become the battlefield. But Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, and through the Holy Spirit, he's shown us how to fight, to resist, and to overcome. Because the devil is real, but he's defeated. Jesus has taught us how to fight it. By the word, by using scripture. Next. Yes, because we saw from those examples, Jesus was tempted in all ways possible, the devil, world, flesh. But he showed us how to overcome it, resisting, rebuking, and chasing him away. And quoting scripture, it is written. Let's remember, saints, we should remember the word, but we should read the word. We should know the word. We should understand the word to read it. And uh, 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 1, 25, uh, lady. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word, the good news of salvation, which was preached to you. Amen. Amen. Yes, the word of the Lord endures forever. The word wins. The word is the ultimate. Let's remember the word. Let's keep the word. Let's, Jesus Christ, use scripture, faith, prayer to overcome temptation just to show us. Next. So now uh, I'm going into the conclusions uh, of, 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 of the, 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 this, this teaching or uh, the, this presentation on overcoming temptation. And the point is overcoming temptation. Let's, let's read again 
why Jesus was tempted and why we need to follow his example. Hebrews 4, 4, 4 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Amen. Amen. So the scripture here, what he's saying, the, what I've highlighted in red, he's saying, it's actually saying we have a high priest who sympathizes with us, who knows our weaknesses, but in all points tempted, and he was tempted in all points, more than what was described in scripture there, he was tempted in all points, just like us, but did not sin. Temptation will come. Temptation itself is not a sin. Succumbing or falling into temptation is the sin. Jesus did not fall into sin. He did not sin. He was without sin. Yes. But he used his word. He used scripture. So Jesus is showing us things that we need to. He, he, he knows exactly what we are going through. But let's use scripture so that we don't fall into sin. Because sin will separate us from the, from the father. And then that's where the devil, then when you are beaten and down, he wants you to come and worship him. But what we do, what one does then is you're just getting into death. You are losing it and you've lost it. We are not going to lose it, saints. We cannot lose it because we are being taught. The word is telling us, Jesus has shown us, we use scripture, we use word to overcome, to rebuke, to chase him or to flee. We use the scripture. Amen. Next slide. Yes. You see, next slide. The, now I'm, I'm, uh, the, 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 the word is showing us how do we do it? How do we resist it? We remember the word, we use the word. You can read James 4, uh, verse 7. Uh, uh, let it. So submit to the authority of God. Resist the devil. Stand firm against him, and you will flee from you. Amen. <laughs> You see, when, 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 even when the scripture comes, when the word comes, it's structured in a way which is very interesting. One might not see it. The, 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 this, this verse, James 4, 7, did not start by saying, resist the devil and he will flee from you. No. Because on my own, with my power and authority, maybe I cannot resist him fully. Yes. For him to, 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 to run away from me. But it starts by saying, submit to the authority of God. So when I submit to the authority of God, I submit to the authority of God by listening to his word, taking in his word, believing in his word, submitting to Christ, submitting to the Father, submitting to the word. And then it fills me. And when it fills me, it has empowered me now. When I submit to the authority of the God, that authority comes within me and through the Holy Spirit that now comes and resides in me. And only then I can resist the devil. I will stand firm against him and he will flee. So what saints, what the word is saying is, take the word first. Remember, learn the word first. Understand the word and submit to that word. And that by doing that, you are submitting to the authority of the Lord. Once you have done that, I am empowered. Just in case we don't understand how empowered we are, read Ephesians 6, 11, Amplified. Put on the full armor of God, for, for his precincts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. Amen. Past, Pastor Hashtag Sweetie, I mean, took a long time to teach us these things, these, these words, to show us these, these scriptures from Ephesians. 
-hmm. It was a nice journey, interesting journey. But just in case, since you have forgotten, remember, there it is. How do you fight it? How do you fight temptation? How do you win? How do you overcome temptation? How do you stay? One, you submit to the authority of the Lord. But then, now you, you when after, I mean, when I submit to the authority of God, what I'm doing is I'm putting on the full armor. And I know in Ephesians, I'm not going, if, if I start in Ephesians, I'll take it just as long as hashtag what it did. So I'm not going there. But you remember saying, the, how we are supposed to put the armor, the elements that we put, the belt of truth, the helmet, the, the, the breastplate, everything. When we do that, we will successfully stand up against all the schemes and strategies and the deceits of the devil. Amen. And when we do that, we overcome temptation. We don't fall into sin. Let's move to the next one. Yes, you can read that. Galatians 5 verse 16. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. Amen. Amen. Walk in the spirit saints. Next, next. 1 John 1 verses 8 to 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Just so that so that you, we, we don't go home quaking and saying I, I, I there was temptation, so now I'm dead, I'm gone, I'm buried. No. If we confess our sins, he's faithful, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And he makes us clean. He makes us righteous. He makes us holy. We, we, we go back into the fold. We, 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 we stay in, in, in the kingdom. Amen. He's a loving God. Next. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 9 amplified. For it is by grace, God's remarkable compassion and favor, drawing you to Christ, that you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment and eternal life through faith, that is salvation, is not of ourselves, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God, not as a result of your own works, nor your attempts to keep the law so that no one will be able to boast or take credit in any way for your salvation. Amen. Saints, let us just walk in the Lord. Let us remember the word. Let us keep the word. We will resist. We will overcome temptation and we are saved. The word says it. So we, we use scripture to fight temptation. We use scripture to overcome temptation. And we walk in the Lord and we receive the blessings and the promises of the Lord. Amen. That's the end of my, uh, my, 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 my session two and final session. Uh, and then let me uh, wrap up later uh, with, with, with a few points, takeaways. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Makamure. Eh, that was so insightful. And uh, I thank you so much. But I just have a question um, as we open up our, our, our discussion in terms of um, the consequences of sin uh, from the takeaways, especially from David. That's where my questions are coming from. Uh, on his first temptation, the the consequences I I saw like um, the first consequences I saw that his son was the first to die. The the son whom uh, Bathsheba was killing was died in uh, on that temptation. And then I also saw Uriah dying because of David uh, David's sin as a consequence of David's sin. Then on the second temptation, on when he counted everybody for, for the census thing, uh, it says that God struck Israel. So now my question is, why is it that uh, sometimes people who are 
I'll say innocent in quotes, uh, suffer for the consequences of somebody else's sin. Is that really like how it is supposed to be or the consequences will just go to anybody? Okay, you see, okay, the, the, you, you can see the, the examples that we've got there are from the Old Testament, which is, uh, of course, a shadow of what it is uh, with, with uh, uh, our salvation now uh, with um, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, 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 redemption from sin. You, 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 you can see that in, 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 the, in, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament, the, even the, the word used to say the sons and whatever daughters would suffer from the, 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 the sins of their fathers and, 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 and. Yes, unfortunately, yes, there is a collateral damage that, that happened there. Where now the people that he was supposed he was supposed to to oversee the people that he was supposed to lead ended up suffering. But I think basically what I would say is that 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 was what was happened under the law in in that shadow of <clears throat> what is the the happening now. We, we on what now with with um with uh, the redemption and uh, the coming in of Christ. You 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 don't get that kind of examples where your 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 child or your mother or your father or your husband suffers for your sin. You you will get the consequences on yourself. Yes, except if 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 for example, if, if it was a disease that one gets from adultery and then transmits to the other. Unfortunately, that happens because of that 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 relationship. But the the, the in 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 the Old Testament. Things like that used to happen, but they when they, 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 those were corrected from the old covenant. In the new covenant, now you you don't find anybody being punished for somebody's sin. So this is so the, 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 this is the area where or the era the, the, the way we 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 exist. This is the era where we exist. But we will face the con I will face the consequences if I do that. If I commit sin or if I am tempted in a fall. Oh, thank you so much. I've learned. Uh, I'm just going to read uh, a couple of messages before I, I I give the floor to the rest of the people. Um, the Mago family was saying to my Mandianike, I mean, thank you. Christ is our only source and hope. We have to approach Jesus Christ and eat communion by faith. We also give. Uh, to God by faith. Then Apostle Paul is saying powerful summary and he needs to catch up with the first session. And uh, then uh, Mrs. Mack is saying we always have a choice to exercise um, either to yield to or to resist temptation. Then she quoted Deuteronomy 30 verses 15 to 19. Then repentance can limit the consequences of yielding to temptation. We have uh, when we have sown to the flesh by yielding to temptation, we can believe for, cro uh, for crop failure by receiving God's mercy as we repent from the heart. Then she's also saying David often succumbed to temptation even, even then his great strength and his willingness and readiness to repent, his repentant heart spared him from the extreme consequences of his choices in yielding to temptation. Then the Marco family is saying, thank you, Pastor Mark, for the great teaching. May you kindly explain how God instructed the people and taught them by his ways during Joseph's time before Moses was sent with the Ten Commandments. Were they written, were these scriptures written during God, uh, Joseph's time? That's a question. Okay. You see, um, the, 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 during uh, Joseph's time, um, uh, or we, we, maybe we can, we can even start from, from, from Abraham. All those patriarchs knew about God. All those patriarchs knew about good and bad. They knew what was good, what was, good, what was bad. But you, what, what, what you see is what was even what, what was written in, in the Ten Commandments, although it had not been given 
to people like uh, Abram and the others, because they, 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 the way of conversing with, 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 with God, they knew what was good and what was bad, which is basically what the Ten Commandments encapsulated at the end and was put in a book. But those, 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 those patriarchs knew, knew what to do to, to, to align to God. And they knew when they did evil, they knew that this was not good. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, you will find it's just t t telling us what are of what is good and what is bad. So I don't know if that that covers. They they knew, but of course in the on the on the tablets it was actually clearly clearly then um, uh, given out. Thank you so much. I, I hope they are answered. I'm going to call upon Pastor Faye to take the the mic. Thank you, Sister Letty. Good morning, uh, Fame. What a powerful message, Pastor Mac, that you shared with us today. And um, I just was thinking, I thought if the verse that came to mind for me was Proverbs 24.10. And it reads, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. That's the New King James. But the message says it in a very interesting way. It says, if you fall to pieces in a crisis, there wasn't much to you in the first place. And I'm referring to your point when you were talking about, when you gave the, uh, Jesus as an illustration to say, when the enemy tempted him, he was ready with the word. You know, he was, he was ready to respond. He was ready to stand. And in this case, adversity could also be temptation. And when we fall, when we are tempted, it really just is saying that we, we were not rooted in the word to begin with. I love what my Mark, my Mark always gives this, um, it's a powerful example in um, concerning how we, should, how we should prepare ourselves before battle. And she says, it doesn't make sense to start learning how to hold, uh, let's say a gun, say in the event of a battle where the enemy has come against you and you know, you're in the middle of this war. And then you now want to start learning how to use your gun, how to use, what other, if, what other, whatever other weapon you have, you've got a lot of time now before temptation comes or before the battle comes to actually take some time to root yourself in the word so that when the battle comes, you are not learning um, how to respond, but rather you, you now know you are well equipped um, on how to respond. So I think today's message was just that to say, we have the word at our disposal and really the honor is on us to, to root ourselves in the truth so that on the day of adversity or when a crisis hits us, we don't fall into pieces. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And oh, Andrew Omak always says, uh, don't fall apart like a $2 suitcase. <laughs> so we shouldn't fall like a $2 suitcase. Uh, I don't see any other contribution, so I'm going to call you back, Mr. Max, so that you summarize your session. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you. Um, so, sorry, Mr. Max. Before before you come back, I'm seeing my Max hand is up. Let me maybe oh. you didn't speak. Sorry, sorry. I, I hadn't seen that. Uh, Mrs. Max, you can come. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Faye, uh, Faye for, for, for coming to the rescue. Uh, and I'm sorry, Letty, because I don't know, I, I can't seem to, to, to be able to raise my hand on the Zoom platform. I'm not sure what's happening to my gadget here. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, um, to also uh, uh, attempt to answer Mr. Magos' question, where he's asking where, how Joseph knew when the Ten Command Commandments had not been issued yet. So the Bible makes it very clear in the book of Romans that every human being has an instinctive knowledge of God, whether the laws are there or not, before the law was given, and even after the law, the, the, the dispensation of the law expired, every human being has an intuitive knowledge of God. And I'm going to read uh, from uh, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, which says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth 
in unrighteousness. So what that passage of scripture is telling us is God has revealed to us intuitively in us. We are wired to know all, uh, all issues pertaining to ungodliness, all issues pertaining to unrighteousness. We know these things even without being taught. It goes on to say, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, in these people, for God has shown it to them. So God has already shown every individual before they even open the Bible. Every individual has an intuitive knowledge of God. It goes on to say, for since creation, since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So what the Bible is telling us here is that no one has an excuse. God has made it uh, uh, fair and just for everybody to have an intuitive knowledge of God of what is right and what is wrong, what is godly and what is ungodly, what is light and what is darkness, even without the use of uh, the, the, the word or the Bible as we know it today. So even before the, the scriptures were written, even before the law was given, mankind, all mankind have had and continue to have an intuitive knowledge of right and wrong. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mrs. Meg. I was hoping you'd speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then uh, Pastor Paul is saying powerful message. I think he's so grateful to Mr. Mark for the, for the session. Then Mr. Mark, I'm inviting you back for, for the summary. And, and th th thank you, Saints. Uh, the summary is very simple. The, just, just to say there are various types and levels of temptations. We, we've, we've just looked at about six, six examples, three from the Old Testament and I think uh, two uh, from the New Testament, Peter, and uh, four from the Old Testament and, and two from uh, the New Testament. But the temptations are so various. So we, we shouldn't limit those temptations just to what David faced or Abraham or Joseph or, or, or Peter. There is things like lust, adultery, that's we saw control, power, anger as well. You, everybody in, in most cases has faced or will face a, 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 a time where something is done which you don't agree with or which, which affects one that you, you are tempted to, to, to get into anger, maybe say the wrong things, do the wrong things or take the wrong uh, action, which then leads to sin. And there is also temptation to drink alcohol. The word says, do not, do not get drunk with wine. It doesn't matter. It could be a black label, guys. It could be a, 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 what castle light. It doesn't matter. Do not get drunk. And if, if one knows that you cannot hold alcohol, just stop drinking because the word says, do not drink. Laziness as well, gluttony, eating too much or overeating, selfishness, worry, worry or anxiety or pride. So I'm just making it broad that all these temptations which lead to sin or all these temptations where the, 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 the devil is trying to move us away from our faith, from doing the right things, we must overcome all this using scripture, the word and prayer. So it's broad. The examples were just to illustrate that it happens to everybody. So saints, we will use the word, scripture, and prayer to overcome temptation. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that conclusion. Uh, I'm going to ask the technical team to bring up the slides of the ministries we have running during the week. Thank you. Uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we have a prayer meeting that runs from 7 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. This one is delivered via Zoom. Then on Wednesday, from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have a relationship and marriage that is also delivered via Zoom. Then on Saturdays, we have men's fellowship for our men. That is... Um, delivered via Skype from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Then for on Sunday, 
from 8.15 to 9.15 a.m. we have Kids Church delivered via Zoom. And then if you have any issues that you might need assistance with, you may contact our administrator, Ms. Vainambereko, on the number displayed on your screen. And even if you want to give your offering as hard currents, you can also get in touch with her on that number. Saints, I'm going to invite back uh, Mrs. Mandiandi K so that she prays for us. Mama, may you pray for us? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We lift your name on high. We give you all the glory, all the honor. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. You have given us Jesus as the prototype, the one that will give us exactly how you want us to live. You have made us to be just like Jesus. Even as we see that when he was tempted, in all ways, he overcame. So thank you, Father, that you have made us to be able to overcome in whichever way that we have been, that the devil may tempt us. And I just want to thank you for your word. Your word is Jesus. Jesus was the word made flesh. And we want to thank you that you have made us to be the same, that the, Jesus has been made flesh in us. So we are able, well able to walk the way that you want us to walk. Just like when David said, I've hidden your word in my heart so that I will not sin against you. So we may boldly say the same thing because you have given us your way, you have given us your word, Lord, and we are hiding your word in our hearts so that we may not sin against you. Thank you for your word, O oh Lord. And we love your word. We want to be able to live by your word so that we can live a life that pleases you, Lord, and a life that ministers to other people so that they may come to know you. Father, we thank you for, for, for your word. We thank you for the teachers that you have given us. We thank you for grace and faith ministry. We thank you, Lord, for everything that we have. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.